Hi, welcome to the next chapter, which is Incident Response, Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery. Let's begin. What should be the outcome of the post-incident review? The options are recommendations for improvements to the incident response process, a report documenting the incident, a decision to terminate the incident response team, or none of the above. Basically, the outcome of the post-incident review should be recommendations for improvements to the incident response process. And these recommendations should be used to make changes to the incident response process and to improve the overall resilience and preparedness of the organization in the event of future incidents. So the correct option is the first option, recommendations for improvements to the incident response process. What is the primary purpose of an IT business continuity plan? The options are to minimize the impact of a disaster on a business, to provide a means of recovering data in the event of a disaster, to ensure the survival of a business in the event of a disaster, to provide a plan for restoring normal business operations in the event of a disaster. While all of the options listed are important aspects of uh, the IT business continuity plan, the primary purpose is to minimize the impact of a disaster on a business. And this includes ensuring the, that uh, essential business functions can continue or be quickly restored, which indirectly cont contributes to the survival of the business. However, the main focus of a business continuity plan is not just a survival, but also reducing downtime, protecting data and maintaining critical operations during and after a disaster. So the correct option is the first option to minimize the impact of a disaster on a business. What is the purpose of conducting a business impact analysis? to evaluate the costs and benefits of different security measures, to identify the critical functions and processes of an organization, to determine the likelihood of a disaster occurring, to assess the impact of a potential security breach. The purpose of conducting a business impact analysis is to identify the critical functions and processes of an organization and to assess the impact of a potential disruption to those processes. So this information is used to prioritize the development of recovery plans and ensure the continued operations of the organization in the event of a disaster. So the correct option is the second option to identify the critical functions and processes of an organization. This is why we are conducting the BIA business impact analysis. What is the final step in incident response? The options are containment, identification, post incident review, analysis. The final step in incident response is the post incident review. Once the incident is completed, then we, we normally do the post incident review. That involves reviewing the response to the incident, uh, evaluating uh, its effectiveness and making recommendations for re improvements that can be made to the incident response process. So this step is critical for improving the overall resilience and preparedness of the organization in the event of any future incidents. So the correct option is the third option, post-incident review. What is the purpose of the remediation step in incident response? The options are to stop the incident from spreading, to determine the cause of the incident, to implement a solution to the incident, to notify relevant parties of the incident. The basic purpose of the incident step in incident response is to implement a solution to the incident. It may involve patching the systems, restoring the data or other measures 
to address the underlying cause of the incident and prevent it from happening again in the future. So the correct option here is to implement a solution to the incident. What is a pandemic disaster? A disaster caused by a cyber attack, a disaster caused by a widespread outbreak of a disease, a disaster caused by an earthquake, a disaster caused by a nuclear explosion. Basically, a pandemic disaster is an event caused by a widespread outbreak of a disease such as the flu or COVID-19. This type of disaster can have far-reaching impacts including widespread illness and death, economic disruption and social and political uh, problems. It is important for organizations to have a disaster recovery plan in place that addresses pandemic disasters in order to minimize the impact of such events on the organization and its stakeholders. So the correct option here is the second one, a disaster caused by widespread outbreak of a disease. What is the difference between a natural disaster and a man-made disaster. The options are natural disasters only occur in rural areas while man-made disaster only occur in urban areas. Natural disasters are caused by human activities while man-made disasters are not. Natural disasters are less severe than man-made disasters. Natural disasters are caused by events outside of human control, while man-made disasters are caused by human actions. A natural disaster is an event caused by natural causes such as hurricanes, earthquakes or floods. A man-made disaster, on the other hand, is an event caused by human actions such as cyber attacks, oil spills or industrial accidents. The severity of a disaster can depend on a variety of factors and it is not always the case that one type of disaster is more severe than other. So the correct answer here is the fourth option which is natural disasters are caused by events outside of human control while the man-made disasters are caused by human actions. What is the role of the CEO in an IT business continuity plan? To oversee the development of the plan, to provide overall direction and support for the plan, to ensure that the plan is implemented and tested regularly, or all of the above. The chief executive officer or simply CEO has a critical role in an IT business continuity plan. The CEO is responsible for providing overall direction and support for the plan, ensuring that it is implemented and tested regularly and overseeing its development. The CEO should ensure that the plan is aligned with the overall goals and objectives of the organization and that is adequately supported and funded. So if you see the options, to oversee the development of the plan, yes, the CEO has to do it. To provide overall direction and support for the plan, yes, the CEO has the responsibility. And also to ensure the plan has to be implemented and tested regularly. That's also one of the CEO's role. So all the options are correct. So the correct option here is all of the above. What is a cyber disaster? The options are a disaster caused by a nuclear explosion, a disaster caused by a natural event such as a hurricane, a disaster caused by a widespread outbreak of a disease, a disaster caused by a failure of computer systems and networks. A cyber disaster is an event caused by a failure of computer systems and networks such as a cyber attack, a data breach or a hardware failure. This type of disaster can have serious impacts on organizations including loss of data, intellectual property loss, 
loss of revenue and even damage to the reputation it is important for organizations to have a disaster recovery plan in place that addresses cyber disasters in order to minimize the impact of such events on the organization and its stakeholders so the correct option here is the fourth option a disaster caused by a failure of computer systems and networks what is the first step in developing a disaster recovery plan the first option is develop procedures for responding to and recovering from a disaster second option is establish a disaster recovery team and the third option is identify critical systems and processes that must be protected and the fourth option is to conduct a risk assessment to identify potential disaster risk scenarios identifying critical systems and processes that must be protected is an important step in the disaster recovery process as it helps to inform the development of the disaster recovery plan and ensure that it is comprehensive and effective in the event of a disaster so the first step in developing a disaster recovery plan is to identify critical systems and processes that must be protected correct option is the third option which of the following is one of the roles of the it department in an it business continuity plan to provide technical expertise for the plan to develop and implement the plan to ensure that the plan is tested regularly to provide overall direction and support for the plan the it department has several key roles in an it business continuity plan one of which is to develop and implement the plan the it department should ensure that the plan is comprehensive technically sound and aligned with the overall goals and objectives of the organization the it department should also be responsible for ensuring that the plan is tested regularly and that any necessary updates are made in a timely manner so the correct option is to develop and implement the plan what are the key components of a business continuity plan the options are risk assessment business impact analysis and marketing strategy disaster recovery plan business impact analysis and incident response plan incident response plan business impact analysis and risk assessment business impact analysis risk assessment and disaster recovery plan the key components of a business continuity plan includes a business impact analysis which assesses the potential impact of different types of events on the organization a risk assessment which identifies potential threats to the organization and a disaster recovery plan which outlines the steps that will be taken to recover critical business functions after an event these three components business impact analysis risk assessment and disaster recovery plan work together to ensure the organization is prepared to respond effectively to unexpected events and maintain operations so the correct option here is the fourth option business impact analysis risk assessment and disaster recovery plan what is the difference between a hot site warm site and cold site a hot site has limited functionality a warm site is a fully functional backup facility and a cold site is an unused facility with no equipment the second option is a hot site is a fully functional backup facility a warm site is an unused facility with no equipment and a cold site has limited functionality the third option is a hot site is an unused facility with no equipment a warm site has limited functionality and a cold site is a fully functional backup facility 
And the fourth option is a hot site is a fully functional backup facility. A warm site has limited functionality and a cold site is an unused facility with no equipment. The answers are little bit confusing, but you have to think and choose the correct option. Basically, a hot site is a fully functional backup facility. You must remember this. And a warm site has limited functionality. And whereas the coal site is an unused facility with no equipment. A hot site is a fully operational backup facility that is ready to take over the operations of a business in the event of a disaster. A warm site has some limited functionality such as basic infrastructure but may require some additional time to be fully operational. Now the coal site is an unused facility with no equipment or infrastructure which would require significant time and resources to be made operational in the event of a disaster. So the correct option E here is the fourth option which says the hot site is a fully functional backup facility, warm site has limited functionality and the cold site is an unused facility with no equipment. The next question is what is an incident response plan? The options are a plan for responding to medical emergencies, a plan for responding to security events, a plan for responding to natural disasters, a plan for responding to workplace accidents. So an incident response plan is a documented process that outlines the steps an organization will take in the event of a security incident such as a cyber attack, a data breach or a system failure. This plan should be well rehearsed and practiced in order to ensure a rapid and effective response in the event of an incident. So the correct option here is a plan for responding to security events that is called as incident response plan, right? What is a communication plan in the context of incident response? The options are a plan for communicating with customers and stakeholders during an incident, a plan for communicating with government agencies during an incident, a plan for communicating with employees during an incident or all of the above. A communication plan in the context of incident response is a documented process that outlines the steps that an organization will take to communicate with key stakeholders such as customers, employees and government agencies during an incident. The plan should be well rehearsed and practiced in order to ensure a rapid and effective response in the event of an incident. So if you see the options available here, the first option communicating with customers and stakeholders, yes, that is also part of the communication plan. A plan for communicating with government agencies, yes, it is also available. A plan for communicating with employees during an incident, yes, that is also available. So the correct option here is all of the above. What is the first step in incident response? The options are analysis, identification, containment, remediation. You must remember that the first step in incident response based on IS square is the preparation phase. But I didn't include it as an option in this question. So the next phase which is the identification will be considered as the first step in this question. Identification involves recognizing that an incident has occurred and collecting information about the nature and scope of the incident. This information can then be used to make decisions about how to respond to the incident. So the correct option here is identification. One of the below is not a purpose of having a communication plan in a disaster recovery plan. The options are to ensure effective communication between stakeholders, to record phone messages during a disaster, to document all communications during a disaster, to provide a framework for communicating with external parties. The purpose of having a communication plan in a disaster recovery plan is to ensure effective communication between stakeholders and also to document all communications during a disaster and provide a framework for communicating with external parties. The second option which says the to record phone messages during a disaster 
he is incorrect has recording phone messages he is not the primary purpose of a communication plan in a disaster recovery plan the communication plan is designed to ensure that all stakeholders have access to accurate and up to date information during a disaster and to minimize confusion and misunderstanding so the correct option is the second one to record phone messages during a disaster that is not the purpose of the communication plan who is typically responsible for developing and implementing an it business com- continuity plan the options are the chief executive officer all departments within the organization a dedicated business continuity team the it department the it department is typically responsible for developing and implementing an it business continuity plan however the plan should involve input and participation from all departments within the organization to ensure that it is comprehensive and meets the needs of the business so the correct option is the it department what is the purpose of the analysis step in incident response to notify relevant parties of the incident to implement a solution to the incident to determine the cause of the incident to stop the incident from spreading the purpose of the analysis step in incident response is to determine the root cause of the incident it involves collecting and analyzing data from various sources such as system logs network traffic and other relevant information to understand what caused the incident to occur so the correct option here is the third one to determine the cause of the incident what is the primary goal of business continuity to minimize expenses during unexpected events to maximize profits during unexpected events to maintain the status quo during unexpected events to maintain operations during unexpected events the primary goal of business continuity is to ensure that the essential functions of an organizations are maintained during and after an unexpected event such as a disaster cyber attack or other crisis this helps to minimize the impact of the event on the organization its stakeholders and its customers so the correct option is the fourth one to maintain operations during unexpected events what is the role of a risk assessment in an it disaster recovery plan to develop a strategy for mitigating the risks and threats identified in the assessment to identify the potential risks and threats to the organization's operations to prioritize the critical business processes that must be protected or all of the above a risk assessment is a critical component of an it disaster recovery plan and it is used to identify the potential risks and threats to the organization's operations prioritize the critical business processes that must be protected and develop a strategy for mitigating the risks and threats identified in the assessment The risk assessment should be conducted regularly to ensure that it remains relevant and up to date. So the correct option here is all of the above. What is a supply chain disruption disaster? The options are a disaster caused by a widespread outbreak of a disease, a disaster caused by a nuclear explosion, a disaster caused by a natural event such as a hurricane a disaster caused by a disruption in the flow of goods and materials a supply chain disruption disaster is an event caused by a disruption in the flow of goods and materials such as the transportation strike a natural disaster or a political crisis this type of disaster can have serious impacts on organizations including loss of revenue 
difficulty obtaining critical supplies and damage to reputation. It is important for organizations to have a disaster recovery plan in place that addresses supply chain disruption disasters in order to minimize the impact of such events on the organization and its stakeholders. The correct option here is the fourth one, a disaster caused by a disruption in the flow of goods and materials. What is the purpose of testing a BCP, Business Continuity Plan? The options are to identify weaknesses and improve the plan, to ensure that the plan is foolproof and cannot fail, to verify that the plan conforms to legal and regulatory requirements, to assess the financial impact of a disaster on the organization. The purpose of testing a BCP, Business Continuity Plan, is to identify weaknesses, its effectiveness and to improve the plan. This helps to ensure that the plan is effective and can be implemented successfully in the event of a disaster. So the correct option is the first one to identify weaknesses and to improve the plan. Which of the following is one of the roles of the management team in an IT con business continuity plan? The options are to ensure that the plan is tested regularly, to develop and implement the plan, to provide technical expertise for the plan, to provide overall direction and support for the plan. The management team has several key roles in an IT business continuity plan, one of which is to provide overall direction and support for the plan. The management team should ensure that the plan is integrated into overall operations of the organization and it is adequately supported and funded. The management team should also be actively involved in ensuring that the plan is tested regularly and that any necessary updates are made in a timely manner. So the correct option here is to provide overall direction and support for the plan. What is the difference between disaster recovery and business continuity? The options are Business continuity refers to the ability of an organization to continue operating in the event of a disaster, while disaster recovery refers to the process of restoring information systems and services after a disaster. The second option is Business continuity refers to the process of restoring information systems and services after a disaster, while disaster recovery refers to the process of reducing the impact of a disaster on an organization. And the third option is, business continuity is about getting your business up and running after a disaster. Disaster recovery refers to the ability of an organization to continue operating in the event of a disaster. The fourth option is, Disaster recovery refers to the process of increasing the impact of a disaster on an organization while business continuity refers to the ability of an organization to continue operating in the event of a disaster. Now the business continuity refers to the ability of an organization to continue operating in the event of a disaster such as a natural disaster, a cyber attack or other disruptions while the disaster recovery refers to the process of restoring information systems and services after a disaster with the goal of minimizing the impact of the disaster on the organization. Disaster recovery and business continuity are closely related but they focus on different aspects of ensuring the availability of information and services in the event of a disaster. So the correct option here is the first option. What is the importance of testing an IT business continuity plan? The options are to determine the effectiveness of the plan in the event of a disaster, to ensure that the plan is up to date and relevant to current business operations, to identify and resolve potential problems before a disaster occurs, or all of the above. Testing an IT business continuity plan is important for several reasons. It helps to identify and resolve potential problems before a disaster occurs, determine the effectiveness of the plan in the event of a disaster, and ensure that the plan is up to date and relevant to current business operations. 
Regular testing of the plan is essential to ensure its readiness and effectiveness in the event of a disaster. So, all the options given are correct. So, the correct answer is the fourth option, all of the above. What is the purpose of the containment step in incident response? The options are to stop the incident from spreading, to analyze the incident, to implement a solution to the incident, to identify the root cause of the incident. The purpose of the containment step in incident response is to stop the incident from spreading and to limit the damage that it can cause. This may involve isolating effective systems, disconnecting from networks, or other measures to prevent the incident from causing further harm. So the correct option is the first option to stop the incident from spreading. What is the primary difference between a hot site and a warm site? A hot site is used for short term recovery while a warm site is used for long term recovery. A hot site is more expensive than a warm site. A hot site is fully functional while a warm site is partially functional. A hot site is located close to the main facility while a warm site is located farther away. A hot site is a fully functional backup facility that is ready to take over the operations of a business in the event of a disaster. A warm site has some limited functionality such as basic infrastructure but may require some additional time to be fully operational. So the correct option is the third option. A hot site is fully functional while a warm site is partially functional. Your organization has just suffered a major disaster and you have been assigned the role of disaster recovery manager. What is the first step you should take in this role. Identify the critical business processes that must be protected and prioritize their recovery. Conduct a damage assessment of the organization's facilities and infrastructure. Begin the process of restoring normal business operations as quickly as possible. Establish a crisis management center and begin communications with key stakeholders. The first step in the role of disaster recovery manager is to establish a crisis management center which will serve as the central hub for coordinating and communicating the disaster recovery efforts. That center should be equipped with the necessary resources and technology to facilitate effective communication with key stakeholders including employees, customers, partners and suppliers. In a real world scenario, the disaster recovery manager might take a combination of steps and they might prioritize one step over another depending on the specific needs of the organization and impact of the disaster. So the correct option for the question is the fourth one, establish a crisis management center and begin communications with key stakeholders. What is the role of disaster recovery in an IT business continuity plan? The options are to provide a means of recovering data in the event of a disaster, to ensure the survival of a business in the event of a disaster, to minimize the impact of a disaster on a business, to provide a plan for restoring normal business operations in the event of a disaster. Disaster recovery is an important component of an IT business continuity plan and is focused on the recovery of data and systems in the event of a disaster. The goal of disaster recovery is to ensure that data and systems are restored to a functional state as quickly as possible to minimize the impact of a disaster on a business. So the correct option is the first one to provide a means of recovering data in the event of a disaster. What is a containment plan in the context of incident response? The options are a plan for containing the spread of an environmental hazard a plan for containing the spread of a virus, a plan for containing the spread of an incident, a plan for containing the spread of a fire. A containment plan in the context of incident response is a documented process that outlines the steps 
that an organization will take to contain the spread of an incident such as a cyber attack or a data breach that plan should be well rehearsed and practiced in order to ensure that the incident does not escalate and cause further harm to the organization and its stakeholders so the correct option is a plan for containing the spread of an incident third option what is the purpose of a cold site to provide a minimal level of infrastructure that can be used in the event of a disaster to provide a plan for restoring normal business operations in the event of a disaster to provide a means for recovering data in the event of a disaster to provide an unused facility that can be quickly converted to a functional backup site in the event of a disaster a coal site is an unused facility with no equipment or infrastructure which would require significant time and resources to be made operational in the event of a disaster the primary purpose of a coal site is to provide a location that can be quickly converted to a functional backup site in the event of a disaster remember we have studied in the previous questions so the correct option here is the fourth one to provide an unused facility that can be quickly converted to a functional backup site in the event of a disaster what is the role of a business impact analysis in an it disaster recovery plan the options are to determine the impact of a disaster on the organization's operations to identify the critical business processes that must be protected to develop a strategy for restoring normal business operations as quickly as possible or all of the above a business impact analysis is a critical component of an it disaster recovery plan it is used to determine the impact of a disaster on the organization's operations identify the critical business processes that must be protected and develop a strategy for restoring normal business operations as quickly as possible the business impact analysis should take into account the specific needs and requirements of the organization as well as the potential consequences of a disaster so here whatever the options have been listed they are correct so the correct option is the fourth one all of the above who is responsible for determining the scope of the disaster recovery plan and identifying the critical systems and processes that must be protected the information technology department the chief executive officer the disaster recovery team the business continuity manager the business continuity manager is responsible for overseeing the development and implementation of the disaster recovery plan and as such they should be one of to determine the scope of the plan and identify the critical systems and processes that must be protected this information will help to inform the development of the disaster recovery plan and to ensure that the plan is comprehensive and effective in the event of a disaster so the correct option is the fourth one the business continuity manager what should be considered during the post incident review the options are the response time to the incident the accuracy of the incident response plan the cost of the incident response all of the above during the post incident review a variety of factors should be considered including the response time to the incident the cost of the incident response and the accuracy of the incident response plan it helps to i'd evaluate the effectiveness of the response and identify areas of for improvement in the incident response process so the first second and third options are correct so hence the correct option is the fourth one all of the above so we have reached to end of this session we have successfully completed this chapter 
I hope all this questions, options and the explanations will definitely help you to understand better about the instant response processes, business continuity plans and disaster recovery plans. We request you to subscribe Zero Touch Cyber in order to receive all the educational videos. Thank you.